Hi everyone, Russ here from 51 Drones and today I'm going to do a no frills walkthrough of the DJI Fly App for the brand new DJI Avada 2. And right off the bat I want to show you right now, I'm using the Motion 3 controller and you can see we have that laser pointer right there. One of the coolest things added to the Avada 2 is the ability to control the settings with your Motion 3 controller. So I'm just going to show you real quick how this works. If you go up to the top menu and then you pull the trigger and that's going to pull down your top menu and then you can click anywhere on the screen to exit go over here on the left hand side of the screen there's your other settings click in the middle of the screen and then the bottom is your camera settings right there so now i just wanted to show you that with the motion 3 controller but uh, i'm just going to use the um, navigation with my goggles 3 to run through the menu just because it's a little bit easier to show you that so i'm going to go ahead and unlock the drone right now right now i have it locked to lock the drone in place, you just push the lock button, which is the orange button on the Motion 3 controller, and that way you can move around uh, the Motion 3 and navigate through the menu system. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock that right now. So I'm just going to hold the Motion 3, and I'm going to use the, uh, the button, the four-directional button on the top right side of the Goggles 3. So let's start at the top menu. I'm just going to scroll down from the very top, and right there it says record, and as you can see, I am recording this right now and I'm recording both the drone view as well as the camera view. If you go over, this is called Enhanced Display. I'm just gonna push down on the 4D button and that's gonna give you just a little bit more contrast, um, brighten it up a little bit. I just like to go without Enhanced Display because that, um, that does drain your battery if you have Enhanced Display on. Right here is Head Tracking, so I'm gonna go ahead and engage that and show you what that does. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And then as I move my head around, that yaws the drone back and forth and then as you look down and up, that changes the gimbal position. So you can't steer the drone, you know, you can't move laterally or up or down or forwards or backwards, but you can yaw the drone and then change the gimbal position up and down. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable that right now. You can see right here we have he um, mobile device sharing and I'm actually recording this on my iPhone. It's streaming to my iPhone, so that is really, really cool. Really useful for screen recording. Um, and then if you go right here, this is called Easy Acro, and you probably have seen that before, but I'm just gonna show you real quick what it does. And I can't do that while it's recording, so I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna hit stop on the record. And then let's go back to Easy Acro. And if you wanna see all the details of how this works, go ahead and check out my full review, but I just wanna show you the, um, the 180 Drift. Okay, so we're just gonna scroll down with the scroll wheel. And then we're gonna flip, okay, the, the joystick on the controller, and then we'll flip it. So that's basically 180 drift, and then let's go down to flip, just like it sounds, flip. All right, let's get a little bit further away here. You can also do a forwards flip and a backwards flip. Okay, so that's what Easy Acro is. It's pretty cool, especially for people that have no experience flying an FPV drone, it's fun to get some of those moves, okay? And then right here, you can adjust the brightness of your screen, okay? So let's exit out of that one. Now let's go over to the left side menu right here. Here we see status, and it just shows you which drone you're attached to, which one you're connected to. So if you had other drones connected at one point uh, or another, you can uh, fly the goggles 3 and the motion 3 with some other drones right now it's just the air 3 and the mini 4 pro i imagine there will be more added uh, in the future but right now those are the three drones that you can use uh, let's go down to album and this is where you're going to see all of your recordings uh, in the goggles storage okay this does not show you the recordings of your drone it only shows you the goggles storage right here is your transmission this is just going to allow you to broadcast focus mode and then change your channel mode. I just leave these off and on auto. As far as audience, this honestly, I don't know what that's for yet. I plan to figure that out soon, but I can't really, um, let's go ahead and just turn this on once. And let's go down to, well, leave focus mode. And when you go to audience, it doesn't do anything. So I need to learn about that. I don't know what that is, but as soon as I do know, um, I'll add it to a future video on the Avada too, okay? So let's exit out of there. Let's go down to settings. So the first one is safety, and this is where you can set your altitude, your maximum flight distance, your return to home altitude. You can update your home point. So right there, I just 
updated my home point to where the drone currently is. And then here when the drone is on the ground and not flying, you can compass, calibrate the compass and the IMU. You can also calibrate the compass um, of the goggles and the IMU of the goggles right here in the safety settings. So let's go back out, let's go down to control. Right here we are using the motion controller. You can change the settings a little bit. Let's go ahead and go into gain tuning. So right now, okay, in normal mode, I have my maximum lateral flight speed at 1.1. Well, I'm gonna change that, right? We're gonna go all the way up as high it goes, high as it goes, 17.9. And then we're gonna go max vertical speed, same thing. We're gonna go 17.9. I'm not sure why these, well, 13.4 on vertical. I'm not sure why these changed because I did have these set up correctly before. So I don't actually know what's going on. Max backward speed, 17.9, okay? And then we're gonna scroll over to sport mode. Let's go ahead and go down right there. Same thing, we're gonna change these to maximum. Actually, if you scroll straight up, that's gonna bring you down to the maximum of 17.9. And then we'll go down to vertical, 20. Forward speed, that one looks okay. And then backward speed, we're gonna to go to 35.8, okay? There we go. Gimbal pitch speed, you can change how fast the gimbal moves. You can change it to fast, normal, or slow. My recommendation, if you are new to this, leave it on normal. Slow is frustrating and fast is just, it's too jerky. So leave it on normal all of the time, okay? Uh, you can calibrate the gimbal when the drone is not in flight. You can set the units from imperial to metric right there. So meters and kilometers or miles per hour. This is turtle mode. So when your drone crashes, you can flip on turtle mode. I'll show you that in a, in a YouTube short or another video, how turtle mode works. And we got the seagulls coming in, my favorite animals. <laughs> you can do a goggles tutorial right here if the drone is not flying, okay? You can also engage a beginner mode. So this is gonna limit your speed and your altitude. So for someone that's never flown before, beginner mode is recommended. Uh, just because it allows you to fly comfortably without having to worry about, you know, going too fast, crashing into something. So beginner mode is very useful for uh, brand new drone pilots, okay? Let's go down to the camera. This is where you can change the aspect ratio from 4.3 or 16.9. Right here is your video quality settings. Lots of different choices on the Avada 2. Right now I have it to 4K60 and I always leave it on 4K60. Uh, you can change your camera field of view from ultra wide to wide to normal. You're not gonna see any difference in your goggle view, but in the recordings, you're gonna see that, um, that different field of view as you change these right here. You can change your stabilization from rock steady to horizon steady. Basically rock steady is gonna keep everything nice and smooth. Okay, everything looks really nice. It's also gonna add that horizon tilt and things when you're flying. But if you want to keep the horizon steady and just have that straight horizon all the time, you'll switch it to horizon steady. And if you are skilled at using your own stabilization software, you can turn both of these off and, uh, and then you can uh, stabilize the footage yourself if you prefer to do that. Okay, right here you can set the auto ISO limit. I just leave this at 6400 all the time. You can turn on grid lines if you want to use grid lines to figure out the center of your... Um, Let's go ahead and see here. There we go. So we got the grid line so you can see rule of thirds. You can see the center of the screen and things like that. And let's go back here. Oh my gosh. Got a little push happy. All right, so I'm gonna turn my grid lines off right now. And then you can set a center point if you want to. Right here, it shows you how much storage you have on the SD card. You can also change the storage to internal storage, so it will store your videos and your photos on the drone, which is awesome. 46 gigabytes of internal storage. So happy that they brought us that. You can format the SD card right there, and then right here is advanced camera settings, and right here you can set to record both the aircraft and the goggles, or one and the or the other when you hit the record button. And here's the um, camera view recording. You can turn that on or off. Here's the auto record on takeoff. So as soon as you launch the drone, it's gonna start recording. Right here is where you can choose D-Log M. So a flat color profile. So if you like to you know, change how your footage looks and kind of fine tune it, you wanna shoot in D-Log M. 
Right here you can change the sharpness of the footage. I like the sharpness of the Avada 2 footage, but one thing that I do recommend is change your noise reduction and put this at a negative two. Okay, noise reduction right there to a negative two. Anti-flicker, just leave that on auto. Don't put your video subtitles on. I don't know why you'd ever want to do that. <laughs> and that is your advanced camera settings. You can reset all the camera parameters right here to the default. And that is it on the settings there for the camera. Here's the display. So you can change the brightness of your display. So let's go ahead and way up. That's going to really drain your battery life. So I leave this one on three. You can change the scaling. So I'm not sure if this is going to show up on my recording but you can shrink it just like that. So it adds a black bar around it. Now this is useful for people who have trouble seeing the corners, you know, in your goggles, the corners of the frame. If you want to narrow it down a little bit, you can do that. So I'm going to go back to hundred percent. You can uh, show where the home point is. So how to have a little H on the screen. And here's the goggles defog. What this does, it turns on the fan into like hyperdrive. So let's go ahead and turn that on. You might be able to hear that. Basically it turns the, the fans on so it keeps your um, inside your goggles from fogging up. Real view 2D, not actually sure what that is, so sorry about that one. And then enable real view picture in picture. And this is where you can tap on the right side of your goggles and it'll show you that pass through. It'll use those front cameras on the goggles three. And so you'll be able to see both your drone as well as what's in front of you. Uh, I do like the concept, but I don't like the very narrow field of view on that. And I discussed that more in my full review. Uh, and then right here, it just gives you all the information about your, your drone, the batteries, your software, and everything like that. So if you want to check the firmware on everything, it's right there. So we're going to back out. We're going to come up from the bottom. And right here is your camera settings. Okay, you can switch from photo to video mode right there. Right here is where you switch from auto to uh, manual mode. But I was going to show you in auto mode, you can still adjust your exposure. Okay, just like that. So you can make it darker, you can make it brighter. You can also adjust your white balance. Right now I have it set to auto white balance. You can change your aspect ratio from here from 16.9 to 4.3. You can also change your video quality. You can change your field of view. You can change your ISO limit, your stabilization. You can choose D log M right here. So you can do a lot of different things in auto mode. And then if you switch this over to manual mode, then you have the ability to adjust everything. So you can change your shutter speed right here. So let's speed that up a little bit. Maybe one more. I'd probably go one over 1600. Okay. And then your ISO, you can adjust that as well. You can adjust your white balance and then all the other things that you could set before in auto mode. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this to um, auto mode again. There we go. And then there is all of your settings for the Avada 2. Let's just take a real quick look at the screen here. So right now I'm in normal mode. I'm going to push the mode button on the Motion 3. That's going to put us in sport mode and that's going to allow us to go about 37 miles per hour versus 18 miles per hour. Okay, and then you'll see the height that your drone is at from the launch point as well as the distance from your launch point. It shows you your speeds right there, both vertical and horizontal speeds. Uh, shows you the distance from the drone to the ground. So we're about 18 feet right there. Uh, shows you got 26 <laughs> battery life. So that's going to start beeping at me pretty soon. It shows you the uh, length of your flight right now. So we're at five minutes. I know it's been longer. Oh, it shows you five minutes left. I'm sorry. So it's counting down five minutes. Uh, shows you the connectivity of the RC um, as well as the signal transmission to your goggles. So that's really good. Both got... Um, all the bars there. 60 megabits per second is our bit rate coming in. We got 29 satellites locked on. We have 87% battery on the goggles. And then on the far upper right hand corner there, you'll see that I got about an hour and a half left on the memory card on the drone and about four hours left uh, on the goggles battery life. So that is the walkthrough of the user interface and the settings for the Avada 2. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments and I'll answer them to the best of my abilities. I uh, really appreciate you guys watching this one as well as my full review. This is one of the most fun drones that I have ever flown, you guys. It's so much fun. And people make fun of me. A lot of my friends make fun of me for using this Motion 3 controller. But I'll tell you what, the reason I'm really fired up about this drone is because of how fun it is to fly. So I don't care about 
like having all the perfect settings and having all of the, you know, just everything be professional. Honestly, you guys, with this drone, I don't care about it. All I care about is having fun, and that's why I like to use the Motion 3 controller. If you like fun, then get the Avada 2 and fly it with the Motion 3 controller, and uh, if people want to make fun of you then. That's on them, man. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. You have a great day, and as always, fly safe and fly smart.